What's up, everyone? We have a little something different today. We have a microphone. Drop the mic. Don't drop the mic. Um, this one is a Sure PG58. Sure PG58, and it's just a microphone. Um, it's a wireless mic. Um, I think I don't know using it for karaoke or something like that. Um, it's not something we normally repair, but somehow a family friend. Um, dropped it off and said fix it and I don't even really tell people that I repair iPhones actually <laughs> somehow it gets out and, and then uh, people come from the woodworks and uh, ask for help and I don't normally I don't really mind helping I guess um, I definitely don't I definitely don't advertise it um, because this is I don't know some people don't mind helping other people I don't I really don't mind either but at the same time, it's kind of a business. I don't. Mm, uh, I'd rather be working towards something instead of working. I don't know. I don't know if that makes sense, but <laughs> I just, yeah. Um, I'd I'd rather be golfing. I'll just put it that way. I'd rather be golfing than fixing this stuff. So, but uh, but you know, I'm always willing to help people for the most part. So, wireless mic here. It doesn't turn on. This is supposed to turn green here. Um, he he actually gave us two of them, and one of them works, one doesn't. So this one turns on. You see the green light turns green. Uh, I'm not sure how. To, okay. Uh, okay, there you go. So this one doesn't turn on. Okay, no power, no power, wireless mic, not no power iPhone. So uh, how do we disassemble this thing? Well, number one power source 9 volt battery all right take that aside number two uh, unscrew from this from this little part right here things are actually easy pretty easy to disassemble it comes in a little part like this got three prongs here that connect to this microphone head and boom operates that way okay so we're gonna put all this stuff aside and what do we do next um well push this thing comes out boom logic board right there all right so how do you fix something without a schematic? Uh, how do you... What do you do with something like this when there's no power, right? Um, man, well, I'll just say this. Um, I guess number one is you, gotta, you have to make sure that uh, there's the incoming power is fine, okay? In this case, in this case, you can kind of just pop this off right here. Oh, shit. Pop it off somehow. Oh, you know what? There's a screw here, actually. I need to take off. Alright, so, screw here. And then this come, kind of comes off, and this whole logic board, and this is that's all that all it really is. It's got all the wireless logic connects to it. Okay, so, what I noticed was that, if you look at the end here, um, this is kind of... This one's kind of jacked up right here. It looks like it's probably been repaired before. It looks like there's super glue all over it. Okay. So what I'm going to do first is really just plug this in right here and just make sure that I'm getting 9 volts at this, at these two leads right here. So I'm going to put my multimeter in voltage mode and I just want to make sure that I'm getting 9 volts here and it's not this actual connector. That's the problem. So, so I put my leads here. I'm getting 9.13 volts. All right. So I know this is good. This is this is not the problem right here. I mean, it's, it, there's really not a whole lot to this. It just looks mangled. So that's why I was maybe uh, this is bad. So, but this is not a problem. I mean, yeah. Somebody super glued this sucker. All right. So we're gonna put this aside and say, okay, it's logic board problem, right? So logic board problem. How do you? Let's go under a microscope and take a look. So how do you? How do you troubleshoot something that you have no idea what the hell is wrong with it? Well, I'll say this. Okay. Um, number one is always visual inspection, and this applies for iPhones as well. So you just you literally just look at the board and see if you can find something that looks bad on this thing. You know, you know what? Something's cutting me up here. So your eyes are pretty much all almost always your your best bet. You know, so let me clean this up because I got glass all in my hands. Okay, so so looking at it visually, I don't really see anything okay um, nothing blown um, nothing brown like 
abnormally brown. Um, you know, I've got nothing. Um, I guess this right here is a little bit, looks like somebody I worked on this before, just a little bit loose. Um, see that right there? See how it kind of, hold on, can you guys see that? Yeah, okay. You see that right there? It's a little loose, so I think I'm definitely going to solder that back on a little bit. Let's go to the back side here. Um, still, nothing, nothing abnormal. I mean, you know, there's no blown filters, nothing's like black or anything like that. Um... Uh, let's see, that's a cap right there. So with, with big surface mount caps like this, or yeah, through hole caps like this, you'll normally see a bulge on the um, at the top if it's bad. You can also put a multimeter on it. If it's shorted, then it's bad. Uh, so we can do that as well, but I don't think it is. It looks fine. So we'll put it in the continuity mode, and then just double tap this sucker, and it, it doesn't beep. So it's 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 good. Um, so I got nothing here. Um, so I think I think the next uh, most common problem are are anything that's mechanical on this thing, you know, like this little switch right here, this switch right here, and this switch right here. Okay, so I mean because you know you push on the button and the switch you know the switch depresses and it's supposed to start things up, right? Well, these are probably the most common problems, right? So. So here's what we're going to do, okay? We're going to pop this switch on this thing right here, and then we're going to depress it, and once I depress it, then it should be shorted, right? So basically, my multimeter's in continuity mode now. I'm going to push this, and you can hear it beep. I don't know if you can hear it beep or not, but it's beeping. And then, so for this one, this is the power switch right here. I'm going to and then depress this, and as you can see, it doesn't beep at all. You know, it doesn't beep, so... So this is the problem right here. It's just a faulty switch, really. The whole thing works. Um, and if we really want to test it, right, we can just we can pop this thing back into the housing. So let's put this thing back in the housing here. It's not the easiest to put back reassemble here, but I'll try it. It's like two holes that it has to go through, and I think this thing is not wide enough, really. So I'm gonna try to bend it a little bit. There it goes. Okay, so so this is back. Um, and I'm just gonna put the screw back real quick. Put this. I'm gonna put the battery in, okay? And I'm gonna push this. It should turn on, okay? Well, assuming that the switch is not working, I'm just gonna go ahead and manually short it, okay? And let's see if this thing turns on. So, so as you can see, actually, um, now do you see that? Do you see that number light up? Yeah, you see it, it says three now. Okay, so. Basically, if we replace that switch, everything should be fine, right? Okay. So, where do we go from here? Well, okay, so, um, we can go to Google. Um, let's see, actually, I'll just do this. Okay, so, we can go to, to DigiKey and say, uh, push button switch. Maybe that'll work. As you can tell, there's a million of them the, of these things, and uh, you can also Google it. Let's see, push button switch, and then you really just have to kind of find what what kind of what kind of uh, switch this is. I would say probably something like that. Uh, so this one says tactile switches. Okay, it's, it's going to be something similar to this. All right. So let's do tactile. Okay, uh, looks about right. Okay, so now, now we need to find out how big this stupid thing is. Um, so how do we find out how big this thing is? Well, 
Let's see. I got my ruler here. Uh, it's not the best ruler, but <clears throat> I'm gonna go in millimeters, and I'm just gonna get a rough estimate of what I what it looks like. And uh, based on this, it looks like it's about six six millimeters in length. Um, one, two, three, four, three and a half, four maybe in width and in depth. Can't really get a good gauge of this, but I'd probably say mm, three and a half, four. So let's say four, four, six. All right. So that's what it is. Okay. So let's go back to DigiKey. We are looking for uh, let's see, let's say four by four by six tactile push button switch. Okay. So tactile switches. Uh, I just do cut tape because you can only buy one of the uh, cut tape is you know you buy singles. And then, okay, let's just scroll down a little bit, see what these, okay, so they look like that. So what I'm looking for is a rectangular one. Um, let's see, length. I think we can probably, well, hold on, outline, okay. So we'll do the outline as, let's say, 6 by 4, okay, hopefully. You know what, we're actually going to select something like, like that, I think. Maybe maybe these, okay. This one's gonna be not good. So I'll just do that. So fifty two remaining, okay, that looks good. And then let's see. <clears throat> so this is so side actuated, top actuated. We're gonna do top actuated since it's a top button. And then that narrows down to forty three. Okay, that looks a little bit better. Now we need a depth of about four. Three and a half, four. So let's go back here and say, okay, actual height of it, 3.2, 4.3. So we'll do we'll do these two, not the two and a half since that's too small. And then there you go. There's three remaining now. So so we got three here. Um, which one looks the best? Eh, this one looks pretty close right here. Uh, so I'd probably say this one will probably work. So we can, it's 56 cents each. We can click on this. And I think this will work. So the actual dimensions are, uh, I don't know what the actual dimensions are. But they have them in stock and ready to ship. So add to cart and wait a few days. <laughs> And so wait a few days and voila, there you go. Here's a switch. As you can see, it's very similar. Um, it should work for what we're doing. So next thing to do is really just to desolder this thing and uh, put it up, put the new one on. Okay. So in order to solder it, you can, you can probably use a regular soldering and it's not a problem. Um, you definitely want to use a little bit of flux. Um, I don't want to burn this, so I'll put this aside over here and then. It's gonna lift here. Lift here. And we will call this one a day, alright? We'll put our 56 cent part. This is actually, I think this was a little bit more actually, because it looked a little bit more crisp. But, it serves the same purpose. Um, definitely get a little flux on that. Um, definitely want a little bit of solder. Just make sure it's aligned properly. Okay, that's that looks pretty good, right? That looks pretty good, yeah. Oops. That looks pretty good, okay. And actually we move this over just a little bit because it looks like it's sticking out. Okay, that looks pretty good. Okay, that looks pretty good. Okay, so now we'll do this side. Exciting, isn't it? Get a little bit of solder. Um, I'm probably using the wrong tip, really. I should probably be using a bigger tip than this. Um, yeah, definitely should be using bigger tips than this, um, but it's okay. 
it's not quite micro soldering anymore, but it'll work. Okay, so that's pretty pretty good. Um, I'm gonna put this back. Uh, I'm gonna wipe the flux off. You know, you don't. Yeah, you, you should probably get in the habit of wiping the flux off, even though it's non-conductive, non-corrosive. Okay. So just make sure it's sitting flush. Yep, it is. Okay. Um. Looks pretty good. Uh, I guess we can. Let's see. You know what? Let's just pop it back in here and test it. Ugh! What's going on here? Why is it not going in, dude? Is it too high or something? No, it should be all right. Okay, there it goes. So this is in. Uh, we're gonna plug our battery in and and push the button, and hopefully this thing lights up green. Hopefully, the moment of truth. There it goes. As you can see, there's a three there. Light turns on. There's a three. And we are essentially back in business. And that's it. Um, not a whole lot to it. Uh, let's reassemble this thing. You know what? I did say I was going to put some... I think I said I was going to solder this. So maybe I'll do that. I should probably do it, yeah. So let's just... You guys will just watch me solder this little piece right here. You can't really see it from your angle right here. But you just have to trust me. Uh, I just want to make sure that this is in properly. Because I don't want this thing coming back to me. So that's pretty good. Trust me. It's not going to move anywhere. That's good. Okay, let's pop this back in. Put the battery back in. Oh, man. I act like I have a, I've, I have long days and but the truth is my days are short. <laughs> Okay, test it one more time. Light is on. We are back in business. Um, wireless mic, you can go ahead and sing to your heart's content. Um, and that's it. That's how you fix a Shure PG58 wireless mic.